Hey guys, it's Max. In this video, we are comparing the brand new M1 powered MacBook Pro against its biggest rival, the Dell XPS 13. And we're not only gonna take a look at CPU and graphics performance, we're also gonna take a look at some gaming tests, photo editing, video editing, the performance when we unplug this system. We're gonna look at our awesome thermal cameras, a real world RAM stress test, speakers, webcams, and more. Let's start out with the exterior differences. And you guys may notice that we have a different hinge here. And that is because we have the two-in-one version of the XPS 13 9300. Now it is almost identical to the regular XPS 13, but the screen can fold all the way around. And there is a benefit to this design. We actually have vapor chamber cooling with dual fans. So that means we should get some great performance out of this i7 processor. Now the regular XPS 13s, those are uh, backordered for a bit. So we were able to get one of these to test it out, but it's still gonna be completely fair. And you guys might also notice that there is a difference size-wise. The XPS 13s are smaller and slightly lighter than the MacBook Pro. Now, as far as ports, both of these have two USB-C ports. The Dell actually has Thunderbolt 4 compared to Thunderbolt 3 on the MacBook, but it does have USB 4. One thing I like about the Dell is that one of your ports are on the right-hand side, and then you have another one on the left-hand side, whereas the MacBook, it keeps both on the left, it makes it a little bit harder to plug in multiple devices and gives you less options for charging. The other thing I like about the Dell is that we have a micro SD card slot, which is great for photographers, people that shoot video, it makes it really convenient. As far as build quality, both of these are excellent, the best of the best. We have solid aluminum, we have magnesium and carbon fiber here. Let's go ahead and open these up and check the hinge. The Dell actually starts opening it pretty easily and then it stops. You guys saw that right there, both opened up fairly quickly. I don't know if the Mac was first, maybe you guys saw it in the camera, but what I love about the Dell is that we have that Windows Hello, so that as soon as you open it up, it logs you in using facial recognition, which is great. With the Mac, you can use your Apple Watch or you can use Touch ID. Now the Mac does have an always on design, so you guys see before I even opened it, it is here ready to log in. And with the Windows laptops, my other XPS, if it's been sitting for a day, it goes into deep sleep and then it takes quite a bit longer, six, seven seconds to open up. Now let's talk about the insides. You guys see we definitely have a difference. The XPS has this carbon fiber soft touch, which does feel nice. It doesn't get too cold, but it does pick up fingerprints and grease pretty easily. Um, the MacBook has an all aluminum design. It is colder to the touch and it'll heat up, but it does feel more premium. Now, as far as the keyboards, the Dell XPS feels pretty decent, uh, but the two-in-one actually has a little bit less travel than the regular XPS 13, probably because they need the extra space for a vapor chamber. So the MacBook's Magic Keys actually feel better than this XPS, but the regular one, I actually like that one better than the Max keyboard. Now, as far as trackpads, the XPS 13s have one of the best Windows trackpads. They are responsive. You can use multiple gestures. It is a diving board design, but it still feels good to click up at the top, but with that said, it still cannot compete with the MacBook Pro's magnetic touchpad. You can adjust the feel of the click, and it's actually not clicking down, so you actually get a perfectly even feel all around. Both do have fingerprint sensors built into the buttons, and then the MacBook, of course, has the touch bar. Some people like it, some people hate it. For me, it's not that useful. Now let's take a look at the displays, and as far as resolution, the MacBook has a 4.1 million pixel display compared to 2.3 on this Dell XPS. Now we do have the 1080p model or slightly higher than that. We typically test out the 4K model. So this time I decided to mash these up more price wise. And so uh, I went with that option. And that also helps with battery life, which we'll be talking about in just a bit. The 4K option does look sharper and I can tell that the MacBook display does look sharper than 1080p, but it also drains a lot more battery life and it costs like 300 bucks more. And of course the XPS is a two-on-one, so it is a touch screen. And in my time with this and the previous one, I found it to be fairly useful. Now, as far as brightness, both of these are rated at 500 nits. I went ahead and adjusted my top camera so they're not blown out and it max out the displays. And just looking at them straight on, the MacBook Pro does look slightly brighter, but off axis at an angle from our side camera, the Dell maintains its brightness really well. Now, as far as reflections, both are very similar, and this HDR video looks fantastic on both of them. And if I had to say it, 
I actually might see a little bit less reflections on the XPS. Dell used to have really reflective displays. They have an awesome coating now. So brightness and reflections and using them in bright rooms and watching videos is a non-issue. Now the MacBook does have a little bit deeper blacks, but it's fairly similar. Now, as far as colors, both of these can display the DCI P3 color space. As you guys could see, the logo is showing up. In previous Dells, this would not work. You'd be limited to sRGB. So Dell has been making massive improvements to their displays. And even though this is a 1080p panel, it is an excellent one. With that said, the MacBook does have a slightly better display. It's sharper. It is actually slightly more color accurate with better contrast. But I would no longer choose one of these over the other based on the display. Please. And now let's go ahead and compare the speakers. Put on a pair of headphones if you have some, and let's take a listen. All right guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I will tell you what I heard. It's a pretty drastic difference. Now, as far as sound quality, the MacBook Pro definitely takes it. There's a lot of bass and mids, whereas the XPS really lacks in that area. Now, as far as loudness, the XPS actually peaked four decibels higher than the MacBook, which is interesting. Now, with this new M1 model, we compared it to the previous one, and it actually got slightly quieter. Apple tuned it to have better sound quality, but they lowered the volume a little bit. Whereas Dell, this XPS has the same speakers as before, but it got louder and it seems like Dell actually lowered the mids and the bass to get better loudness output. So as far as speakers, this thing is definitely loud enough. It just doesn't sound as good as the Mac. Both of these laptops feature 720p webcams. Right now I'm recording with the Dell XPS 9310 in a very well lit environment. So this is the best video quality you can expect. And this is the microphone quality from the Dell. And this is the webcam and microphone quality with the new MacBook Pro. The hardware stayed the same as before, but Apple said the new M1 chip actually processes the video better. So let me know which one looks better and which one sounds better down in the comments section below. And now let's get into performance. We're gonna start out with the SSD test. Both of these machines have 512 gigabytes of fast SSD. Let's go ahead and get started. That is a pretty big difference. We have 1,000 write compared to 2,000 and 1,900 read compared to 2,700. That's a massive difference. Now, with our previous XPS videos, we actually tested the one terabyte model and that one is close to the MacBook Pro, but I guess with 512, it is a bit slower. Now, this two-in-one, you cannot upgrade the SSD. It's soldered in just like the Mac, but if you get the standard XPS, you can actually switch out your SSD yourself, which is nice. And now, let's compare web browsing performance. I have Chrome opened up on both of these, and we're gonna get started. And we have a results. We have 155 compared to 208. 155 is actually the highest I've ever seen on an Intel-based machine, thanks to the 11th gen processor, but Apple's M1 is wicked fast for web browsing and simple tasks. And now let's compare the CPU performance. I'm excited to put it against Intel's 11th gen, but I wanna point out a couple things first. This thing can boost up to 4.7 gigahertz, which is crazy, very high, whereas the M1 Max sits at 3.2 gigahertz. Now, before I get started, I do wanna point out that I do have it set to best performance, which you do have to change in Windows. And with that, if you buy one of these machines, you won't get the full performance unless you open up Dell Power Management, then go to Thermal Management, and then set it to Ultra Performance. If you don't do this, you will never get the proper performance. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, we have our scores, and wow, that's actually better than I expected. For single core, we only have a difference of about 220, so that's about 15% faster with the M1 Mac, but for a multi-core, the Mac is 40% faster. So this single core score is still awesome. It's the best I've ever seen for an Intel based system or AMD, but the Mac is killing it. Now, as you guys probably noticed, the XPS is plugged in. Our MacBook Pro is not. It gets full performance no matter if it's plugged in or unplugged. So next, what I want to do is go ahead and unplug this XPS. 
I'm gonna make sure that we're still in the best performance modes, and I'm gonna run this one more time, and we're gonna see, do we maintain this performance, or do we lose performance, and if so, how much do we lose? All right, we are done, and man, this is disappointing. Now, the single core score, it didn't drop by that much, just by 100 points, but the multi-core score definitely took a massive hit, and comparing it to the M1 Mac, the M1 is now, instead of 40% faster, it is more than twice as fast, which is crazy, and we are still set to the highest performance modes in all the options that we get with this system. Now, what I'm really curious about is how this will impact real-world performance, so for example, photo editing, video editing, and other tasks, if you're not able to be plugged in. We'll take a look at that in just a bit. And now, let's compare the graphics, and this is gonna be interesting because 11th Gen has the new X graphics which is a big step up let's go ahead and run both of these the results are in we have 17 and a half thousand compared to 21,700 so the Mac does win out it's about 25% faster but I do want to note that 17,500 is a massive improvement compared to Intel's 10th generation graphics and this particular XPS has the best XE graphics it's the highest chip that Intel makes so that is good performance but it's still not as good as the Mac and now let's compare gaming performance I have G FX bench opened up right here, which is going to run a gaming FPS test. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, of course, with Windows based systems, most games just work. And with the Mac, a lot of games aren't currently working. Of course, we are going to get the ability to play iPad games, iPhone apps, all of that's coming, and more games are being added as we speak. So, we are going to be doing an ultimate gaming test with this MacBook Pro. So make sure you guys click that subscribe button if you guys wanna see it. The scores are in and this is very interesting. We have 39.6 frames per second on the Intel based system and that is actually pretty good. But on the Mac side, we have 81.2 frames per second, slightly higher than double, which is crazy. And that just shows off the efficiency using Apple's Metal API with its own custom chip. And in some of the real world gaming tests that we've done and seen, the performance just doesn't make sense. Apple is doing some crazy optimization to get really good frame rates out of games. And now let's push these machines to their limits using Cinebench R20. Before I do that, I wanna get an initial thermal reading. So taking a look at the XPS, it looks like we have a hotspot there at about 36 degrees Celsius. And then flipping over to the MacBook, our hottest spot is 25 degrees Celsius. That is a massive difference. Now, another crazy thing is that when this XPS is just sitting there, it's using about 2000 milliwatts or two watts of power. You see it fluctuating. Whereas our Mac, it's using 26 milliwatts. Now, let's go ahead and run this test and let's check out our wattage right away. Wow, we see 45 watts there, 47 watts. CPU is at 100 degrees Celsius. So the Intel is getting great performance with very high wattage and really high heat as well. Our max fan is off and it's at 64 degrees Celsius, so it's staying really cool. And as far as the CPU wattage, it's using about 13 watts, and now the XPS has dipped down to 27 in order to cool off. It's been about two minutes. I could definitely hear the fans in the XPS. The 11th gen chip is running at 3.3 gigahertz compared to 3.2 on the Mac M1. And what's interesting is, this processor has energy efficient cores, and those are about 70 degrees Celsius, 69, compared to 92 for the performance cores. It's been just over five minutes, and it's interesting that the Dell is now at like 19 watts, 20, and it's running much cooler, but the fans are running at full blast, whereas the Mac, it's running pretty hot if you take the very hottest point of the CPU, but the fans aren't even halfway. So Apple is choosing to allow this to run hotter, but stays completely silent compared to having loud fans and running cooler while lowering performance. Let's take another look at thermals. It looks like the XPS is at 45 degrees Celsius, and it has actually cooled down quite a bit compared to a couple minutes ago. And then our M1 Mac, it's at 35 degrees Celsius at its hottest point, even though the CPU internal temps are higher. All right, we have our scores. The MacBook Pro got 77.04, and before we reveal the XPS, Vadim actually guessed 6,300, I guessed 5,900. Let us know your thoughts right now in the comments section below. Just pause the video, go type it out, and all right, now that you've done that, hopefully you did, the score the XPS actually got is 
4816, quite a bit lower than we expected. That means that the MacBook is 60% faster under sustained CPU load, which is shocking. Now, the reason the Dell, its score is so low, lower than we expected, is because even though it starts out at 45 watts and then drops down to 30, 33, after a bit, it goes down slowly. It tapers down all the way to about 17, 18 watts. And instead of 3.3 gigahertz, it will run at about 2.7. And that is so weird because it cools down the CPU and there's a lot of thermal headroom. So Dell will not give you full performance long-term on this machine even when it's plugged in. Now, I wanna go ahead and unplug this. I'm just gonna run a single run instead of a 10 minute run, and I'm interested what is the full performance you can get if you're on battery power. All right, we have our results, and I actually ran three tests, which probably takes about five, six minutes. The last test, we got 4,228, so definitely lower performance. Now, it's interesting that the first one we ran, it actually got 5,200 higher than our 10 minute stress test, but as you see, as we moved on, it just gets lower lower and lower. So if you're doing something that's longer than maybe two, three minutes, you definitely take a hit in performance. Before we take a look at photo and video editing performance, I wanna do a real life RAM stress test because the new M1 Max have what Apple calls unified RAM. So the 16 gigs is built into the chipset compared to 16 gigs standard, like most computers have had it. I have about 10 tabs open here in Chrome. I have a few open in Safari and Edge, a couple other programs. So let's go ahead and just We'll flick through some of these tabs over here. I have my Google Drive. That was pretty fast. And we're getting a little bit of glitchiness, but it's still pretty dang smooth here. Let's go to our Word document. We have a 1080p video open. Analytics there, pretty dang good, pretty smooth. My 3D floor planner, oh, it's glitching up. All right, that's good right there. Let's try that out on our Mac. Google Drive, nice and perfectly smooth. Word document, YouTube video, a couple more websites. Everything is open, nice and smooth. Let's open up Lightroom here. Bam, both opened pretty much the same time. Uh, let's go to the develop tab over here. All right, XPS was faster. Now this is an x86 application. It's not yet optimized for ARM, so it's running under Rosetta. Let's go ahead and switch to another photo, okay. I'm pretty sure I clicked it. It switched on the preview here. Come on. All right. It's loading up right here. Bam. All right. So we are definitely seeing some. Oh my goodness. Now I also have DaVinci Resolve open here. Let's click that. All right. Let's flick through these tabs over here. All right. We are getting some slowdowns but still very usable on XPS. So far, we just have these tabs and applications open. We're not really doing anything tough. So what about for multitasking? Say, I'm gonna go ahead and export these images, which we'll look at the speed in just a sec. The Mac is on, so let's go ahead and open up Chrome again. We have all our tabs, video running, no issues. How about we open up DaVinci Resolve in the background? Switch to the Edit tab. That is pretty dang quick. All right, we're getting some glitchiness there. You guys can see that pretty much all these tabs are taking a little bit extra time now because that's to reload it from the SSD. Oh my goodness, come on. Uh, let's open up DaVinci Resolve like they did on the other one. Maybe go back to the edit tab. Three, four seconds or so to open instead of pretty much instant. So it looks like once you start doing other things like rendering the background, the Dell does slow down quite a bit and that unified RAM is helping on the Mac. And as we're doing that multitasking and testing, our Mac is almost done with this export, whereas the Dell, it's about halfway. So it seems like the not having extra RAM is really limiting it. The XPS finished up and it looks like it took four minutes and 38 seconds compared to 246, so almost twice as long. And I'm curious, is that because we have, you know, a bunch of tabs open, another application open, or is it because of Apple's unified RAM? So let's go ahead and shut down these apps. I'm gonna restart both systems and we'll see how long it takes with photo editing without a bunch of other things open. And now let's look at photo editing. I just did a fresh reboot nothing else is open in the background so we're gonna have optimal performance these are 42 megapixel images here they are raw with a bunch of corrections let's go ahead and zoom in 
And I'm surprised we're getting a little bit of glitchiness on the XPS, perfectly smooth on the Mac. I have to point out that the Mac is actually running this program under Rosetta. That means you do lose a little bit of performance. Let's go ahead and switch between these files. So as far as speed, they're looking to be pretty dang similar. And in some cases, the Mac is actually loading up faster, which is very interesting. And now let's compare brush performance. I have an exposure brush here, nice and smooth on the Mac. Let's look at the XPS, also nice and smooth. And even if you're using an unoptimized app like Lightroom, you're still getting great performance on the Mac. Now let's go ahead and select these images and we are gonna run an export test again. It looks like it's doing better this time. All right, we have our results and this is very interesting. The MacBook took two minutes, 39 seconds and the XPS took two minutes and 44 seconds. So it looks like it's just slightly slower than the Mac, uh, but way faster than when we had other applications and Chrome tabs open. Whereas the unified RAM in the MacBook Pro, it seems like it's actually working. It barely made a difference having it loaded with all that stuff. Now, many of you guys also ask us to test building one-to-one -one previews. So let's go ahead and I'll click it on both. We're almost completed. So far, they are super close. Of course, the XPS fans are very loud on the Mac. It is on, only if I get very close, so it's pretty much silent. All right, it is finished. Looks like we have two minutes and 58 seconds for the Mac and three minutes and 12 seconds for the XPS, which is interesting because this application is optimized for x86 processors. And once it gets updated for the Mac, it's gonna be even faster. And now let's get into video editing. I have DaVinci Resolve opened on both machines. Of course, on the Mac, you can use Final Cut, which is quite a bit faster. You can also use Premiere on both, but Premiere is very sluggish. DaVinci Resolve is nice and optimized. We're gonna start out by stabilizing a 20 second 4K clip. I'm gonna hit start on both of these. Oh man, it crashed again. That's my second time trying to stabilize that footage and it keeps crashing. I wonder if there's just not enough video memory to do that effect because with the XPS, we have 1.5 gigs that the graphics chip can use. Whereas with the M1, the unified memory, it has 16 gigs that it could share based on the CPU and GPU and what needs it most, which you guys saw, it was quite a bit ahead of the XPS before it crashed. Yep, it looks like our RAM is pretty much maxed out just having Resolve opened. I just reopened it right here. Where it's interesting on the Mac side, we also have 16 gigs of RAM, but only 9.79 is used. But let's go ahead and do something a little bit more simple. We have just a 4K project open here. I have uh, some film grain applied and some LUTs. Let's go ahead and hit play on both of these. And as you can see, the Mac is playing back perfectly 30 frames per second, whereas the XPS, we are getting quite a bit of glitchiness. So let's just go ahead and do a render test. I'm gonna jump over to our deliver tab. Gosh, that is slow. <laughs> I'm gonna select Intel Quick Sync to speed up our export using the hardware encoders built into Intel CPU. And let's go ahead and hit render on both of these. It's interesting, we have 12 minutes remaining on the XPS and on the Mac, we have five minutes remaining. And DaVinci is actually pretty accurate with their estimated time. So about three times faster on the MacBook Pro. And of course, this is what the XPS plugged in. I'm really curious, actually we're now at, oh man, we're at, almost 13 minutes now, I guess it's slowing down. And I actually already did this export in my previous comparison uh, and it did finish right at five minutes. And I'm really curious what's gonna happen if I go ahead and unplug the XPS and it looks like actually that didn't change anything. And that is probably because, yep, we're not maxing out our CPU, only about 30% use. We're more maxing out the graphics and hitting the RAM close to max. I'll plug the XPS back in and now let's wait for it to finish. All right guys, the Mac took five minutes and two seconds and the Dell XPS took 12 minutes and 50 seconds. So a massive difference there. And just so you guys know, DaVinci Resolve isn't yet optimized uh, for Apple's encoders. Once it is, it will take about three minutes and four seconds, just like Final Cut is. So as far as video editing, if you're looking to do video editing, you should definitely get a Mac instead. So there you guys go. What is our final verdict? Well, I still recommend the Dell XPS for people that want Windows, that
that don't need macOS or don't want it, it's still a fantastic laptop. And this is my favorite laptop. I would go for the non two-in-one option. Um, you guys can check out a review if you guys want to see that. But if you're open to using a Mac system, the new 13-inch MacBook Pros with the M1 processors are incredible and I would highly recommend them. Not only is the performance better in most tests or all that we did, it could do that unplugged. The battery life is off the charts. It's ridiculous if you guys saw our other videos. You have a great trackpad. The display is bright, nice and sharp. And even for applications that are not optimized yet like Lightroom, the performance is still fantastic. And then when you load up the RAM, it also performs better thanks to that unified memory. So let me know your thoughts down below. I wanna hear your guys' opinions. I have links to both these down in the description. There's actually sale on, sales on both. And you guys can click that circle above if you guys want to subscribe to see more videos. Check out the XPS review, the standard one, and another comparison right over there. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next video.